All right, it is that time of year again. Riding season is finally upon us and you might need a new set of tires for your bike or you might be needing a new set of tires for your bike sometime this year. So I'm gonna give you a breakdown on all the tires that I have in front of me here. And this is not gonna be a breakdown as far as the composition or the structure of the tire or anything like that. This is gonna be more of, I'm gonna be talking about the experiences that I've had with all of these tires. I've put a lot of miles on pretty much every single set that we have here. After the end of this video, check out the links in the description below for where you can purchase a set of these tires from us. We match a lot of the major online retailers, so it would greatly help us out. Let's get started. All right, first up on the list are gonna be the budget set of tires. These are, you know, the tires that just won't break the bank, tires that are just gonna get the job done. It's kind of like a set of Skechers or New Balances. Nothing special, can't afford the Jordans, but that's okay. Need a set of tires, the belts are showing, whatever. This is your set, <laughs> these are the sets that you need to look at. The first one we're gonna be talking about is the Dunlop GPR 300. Not a whole lot to say about a lot of these budget tires. Dunlop GPR 300 is kind of a hard tire. Um, the compound's okay. It doesn't do very well in wet nor cold weather, but it is a great set of tires for smaller CC bikes, really anything under 600 CC. So your 300s, your 400s, 250s, stuff like that. Great go-to tire, very inexpensive again. And you do have some good you know, tread on this tire for wet weather grip, but really it's just not developed for that. It's a very, again, just entry-level tire. Um, so really not much to say about this one. All right, so moving on to something a little bit more beef to it is the Continental Conti Motion tire. This is actually a pretty decent set of tires for something that is about like 750cc and below. You can put this on a larger bike. You can even put it on a Hayabusa or a ZX-14 or something like that that's putting out big power, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Um, it doesn't do very well in the cold. It doesn't do very well in the wet, but the wet weather is not too bad. It does have pretty good tread depth for a budget tire. It also does come very far to the edge. The tread siphons do come very far to the edge, which is nice. So it's not a bad tire. Like I said, it did actually surprise me. I have put a ton of miles on this tire. I've burned through a couple sets of these in my younger days when I was going through college because they were just so cheap. And um, yeah, it wasn't bad. They performed really well in the summer. I was really surprised with that just not good um, for the rest of the year. Moving on to probably the best set of budget tires you can throw on your motorcycle, and that is the Dunlop Road Sport 2. Dunlop Road Sport 2, even though there's not a ton of siphoning going on here with the tread, and there's not a very large cutout for any kind of water evacuation or anything like that, this tire actually performs really well in the cold and wet. For a cheap budget tire, it's really not bad. Now I'm not saying this is like better than obviously a Michelin Road 5 or something that we're gonna review, talk about in a little bit, but it still does pretty well, a little bit better than honestly the, the Conti Motion. So this would be a tire that I would recommend to somebody if they do ride pretty much all year round or late into the season and they just need a budget tire, this is, would be the go-to tire. And we do stock a lot of these here because it is such a popular tire and customers do like it because it just does really well with cold weather. If you did have a larger 1000cc or even a Busa or ZX14, the Road Sport can handle it. Okay, swapping over now to the mid-range to kind of high-end tires here. We're gonna start things off with one of my favorite tires. This is my favorite set of tires. This is my go-to set of tires for pretty much all my bikes these days. The Rosa 3 performs really well in the wet and in the cold, and that's what I've loved a lot about the Rosso 3, um, as well as mainly a lot of other Pirelli tires. You have really good tread depth, and it does come fairly far out to the edge of the tire, so you get good water evacuation, even at some pretty good lean angles, but you can still see you have a good chunk of tread where there's no siphoning or anything going on, just really good grip. It's a dual compound tire. So you do get pretty good life out of it. This is the tire that we recommend to a lot of customers if they do do a lot of commuting on their bikes, especially if they do a lot of commuting on 1000cc motorcycles or really anything above a 750, or you're putting down some pretty good horsepower numbers for your motorcycle and you do a lot of commuting and you get stuck in the rain occasionally, that kind of thing. The Rosso 3 is your go-to tire. That would be the tire I would look into if I were you. 
dwindling down here, we're almost done. The other set of tires we're gonna be talking about is the Michelin Pilot Power 2CTs. This is a super great tire for big CC bikes. This is also a tire you hear a lot of people talk about and rave about. At first, I was not actually a huge fan of the 2CTs, the Pilot Powers, but as I rode with it a little bit more, I did start to get used to it. The biggest thing with these is they wiggle. <laughs> At high speeds, you'll definitely feel the bike want to wiggle a little bit more, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, but it's just the way that the, the tire is made. It grips really well. You have great siphoning for water evacuation that comes all the way basically to the edge of the tire. So it actually performs pretty well in the wet. Performs really well in the cold as well because it's a nice soft compound and does heat up really good in the winter. The thing that I didn't like about it as much is, again, the feedback that it would provide at higher speeds, you get some wiggle out of it. And that's because you can see at the inside of this tire compared to a standard tire like the Dunlop Q3, you can see that there's like a web pattern. It's called the honeycomb structure of their tire versus a traditional steel belt. That just provides more flex for the tire and you can feel that and it just kind of gives a weird feedback. Also, I got used to it eventually, so it's just something that maybe you might have to get used to if this is the first time you're trying out this set of tires. I will say to sum up this tire in one phrase, it would be hook and book. Because of how flexible this tire is, they just squat and go. When you're lifting it up out of a corner and accelerating, I mean, look at how just like easily flexible this thing is compared to like the Rosso 3. Rosso 3 is a hard, pretty stiff carcass tire. It, it's very hard to flex. I can't flex this thing at all compared to the Pilot Powers. So it's just completely different feedback compared to some other brands, but I did really like it. Accelerating hard out of a corner, this, this tire hooks really well, especially for a larger CC bike this tire hooks super well. Okay, another great mid-range tire would be the Dunlop Q3 Plus, but that is if you can get your hands on the set. This year, unfortunately, it does look like the Dunlop Q3 is gonna be discontinued from Dunlop's lineup, which is a shame. It's been a tire that they've had for over a decade in their lineup, and it's been a great tire. So if you can get your hands on a set, this is a great tire for somebody that can do a ton of track days throughout the year and does some street riding. It's not something I would recommend to somebody that does a ton of commuting on their motorcycle. Now, what about if you do want a set of tires that is more suited for the track um, and you do some street riding? That would be the Pirelli Rosso 4. So the Rosso 4, very similar to the Rosso 3, but the Rosso 4 is more track oriented. The compound's a little bit softer as well as it doesn't have as much tread cut out for water evacuation, so you have better grip in the dry and when the tire is hot. Um, but that would not be a tire I would recommend to somebody that's doing a ton of commuting on their bike. They get stuck in the rain a lot. The Rosso 3 would be the better suit for that. And the Rosso 3 you can do a couple track days on throughout the year, but the Rosso 4 would be for somebody that does like diehard track days. And like I said, at least a handful throughout the year. And in fact, I think the Rosso 4 or the Diablo Rosso family is where a lot of people are going to come over from Dunlop Q3s. If you were a huge fan of the Dunlop Q3, and since they're just not offered anymore, it looks like, then the Pirelli Rosso family, either the Rosso 3 or the Rosso 4, are going to be the tires that you should look into. And then I think you'll find yourself um, being very happy with because it's a very similar performance tire to the Q3. All right, so let's talk about a high-end tire. This would be on the lower scale of the high-end tires, the Michelin Road 5, but it is a fantastic tire. It's actually a tire that I loved this year. Like I said before, wasn't a huge fan of Michelin tires, but this thing held up really well. <laughs> Provides great feedback. The grip is phenomenal. The wet weather grip is phenomenal. Everything about this tire was great. The only thing I would say with this tire is if you are somebody that really spends a lot of time riding on the street and not so much track, you would want to maybe go with the Rode 6 because the Rode 6, the tread siphoning and the tread is further to the edge of the tire. So you have better wet weather grip at lean versus the Rode 5. Uh, you do have just, this is more suited for street riding or a track day because there's not as much tread at the edge of the tire. You just have straight rubber, so you get that really good grip at super lean angles. 
which this tire can handle. This tire can also handle some higher CC bikes too. Like don't be afraid to put this on a big 1000 CC bike that's pushing 200 horsepower. This can definitely handle it and you get pretty good mileage out of it. So the Road 5 was phenomenal. Some other ones that you can consider for higher end tires, ones that I don't have here with me today, Dunlop Q5, that's new for this year, so I don't really have a whole lot of info on that, but the Q4s was pretty phenomenal. I got a lot of feedback from customers going to track with that. In fact, I would only recommend that tire for track use. Same thing with the Super Corsa SPV3s from Pirelli. Those things are phenomenal. Again, would only really recommend if you're doing a lot of track riding or you live in a state that you see no rain, because <laughs> if you see rain, you better pull over with those sets of tires. <laughs> the Power Cup 2s from Michelin is another great high-end set to go with. Really good structure to it. Uh, I believe that also has the 2CT Plus. It gives it just a really good feedback. It's a good stiff tire, holds up at high speeds. So I think that one would be a great tire to go with. But again, I would only recommend that tire for somebody that's mainly doing track. Like those three tires that I just mentioned are just, they're not really meant for street use. <laughs> like they are legal DT, DOT tires, but we don't recommend them to customers at all for street use. Ones that you can use for street use that are higher end, besides just the Road 5, would be the Pirelli Angel GT2s. It's not actually a touring tire. Their touring version of the Pirelli Angel GT2s um, that is meant for touring would be the A-Spec versions. So they have A-Spec versions and they have standard GT2s. Those standard GT2s, you can put on smaller sport touring bikes, or you can put them on any super sport. We've actually had a lot of customers put them on their 1000s and they love it. The wet weather grip that you can get out of the GT2s is pretty phenomenal. When you look at the tread pattern of the front tire, it reminds you a lot of MotoGP or a World Superbike wet weather tire would look like as far as tread pattern goes and the water evacuation of that thing is phenomenal. So something I recommend to a lot of customers that just want a tire that can withstand a ton of miles um, but still provides really great wet weather grip and dry grip all year round. It's great in the cold. Can't go wrong with the Angel DT2s. The last tire I would recommend for the high-end tires would be the Pirelli Rosso 4 Corsa. It's a pretty good tire for kind of that all year round kind of riding. Decent tread pattern for water evacuation, but it's, it's not great. Um, but at least it is better than a Super Corsa. So this is a tire that I'll recommend to customers if they're doing still a lot of street riding, but they also do a lot of track riding on the weekends, or they do just a lot of like canyon rides or back road rides um, where they're really pushing it. The Rosa 4 Corsa is a great option for you, especially for higher CC bikes. It can handle wet weather better than like a Super Corsa can. All right, so that sums up the end of this video. Hope you found it informative and found it to be some good information on what tire works best for kind of what scenario and what might work best for you when you're shopping for tires or looking to buy a set of tires. Again, check the link in the description below. You can purchase everything from us. You can also purchase helmets, jackets, gloves, hoodies, all kinds of cool stuff down in the link below. Um, it would really help us out. We would greatly appreciate it. And We'll see you guys in the next video.